everyone, it's Steph here with a more in-depth video on carve groups and carve masks. This is part of our video tutorial series where we take this awesome cargo ship model through a detailed texturing process in Toolbag 5. In this video, I'm going to show some advanced masking techniques for your layers and carve groups. I'll be using processor layers, procedural layers, library textures, and mask generators. So let's get started. First thing I want to do is set up a color ID transparency mask for the white paint carve group so that it keeps the white paint to its own section and the blue paint I'll be adding has access to the clean metal underneath. When I drag the white paint over to the model, the ID will show up and I can drop it onto the bottom half, which will automatically set up a color ID mask for this layer. You can see on the interface, there is now two mask UI boxes on the carve group. The left one with the gradient icon being the carve group mask, and the one on the right being the transparency mask. Now I can make a new carve group by hitting the new carve group button at the top left of the layers window called blue paint. And before I do anything, I'll set the normal blending to normal detail and the bump blending to overlay. Righto, I reckon I'll need five layers here. First one is a simple rust material. Next, I'll need an undercoat, so I'll use this paint stained material for that. For the actual paint, I'll use enamel paint. After I adjust the roughness and tiling settings, I'll duplicate this layer and make a slight adjustment to the new layer's roughness and bump. This will give a non-albedo variation between the two layers. The final layer will be a stain layer. This stain is using the paint stained material again, and this layer is more of an albedo and roughness variation on top. So I'll disable the other inputs for this layer. That should do it. Now I should also set up the layer mask on this. I'll do this a more manual way by adding a color mask white, then going to the generators layer and adding color selection. Inside this, I can add a new material ID picker and then using the dropper tool, pick the material ID color I wanna mask it to. Easy. Like the previous carve group video, I'm going to set the colors on these layers to clear contrasting debug colors, which helps me see what I'm doing. It's easy to get lost when manipulating so many layers at once, so debug colors save a lot of time. Time to start on the Carve Group's mask stack. This is going to be a massive mask since I'm working with more layers. So I'm going to need to open up the split viewport to show the canvas and set it to mask view. I'll also use the little arrow dongle on the left sidebar to collapse that down so I get more viewport real estate. Now I can just click the carve group mask and chuck in a 50% gray fill layer. Then I'll jump right along to adding a paint layer to paint in a white mask where my large stains will go. I found some cool reference of an F-16 where it had some staining from the air to air refueling port bleeding over the back. I figured the engine when in an elevated position might do something similar on the wing and again on the back fuselage blended wing. So I'll just mark that out with the lasso tool and then using the fill tool on the top bar, I'll fill each section with white. Even though my selection crosses UDEM tiles, I'll only need one click per selection and it will fill right over them seams. I'll blur this by adding a blur layer on top and set the blur amount to around 70. That should do for now. I might switch the canvas viewport to use the main camera and set the view mode to mask in preparation for edge damage time. I'm gonna start with a curvature layer for basic edge damage. So I'll slam the cavity intensity to zero and then tweak the intensity, contrast and thickness. Let's think about how to do this. I want the paint to chip away at the mask, so that means going darker on the edges. So I gotta invert the curvature to darken the edges, then set the blend mode to multiply. Curvature is great, but I'm always looking for ways to reduce how uniform it can look. 
The main way I like to break up the uniformity is by dragging a noise mask into the curvature layer and setting it to a blend mode like overlay or color dodge. The noise mask I'm using is the 3D generated Perlin noise. Once added, I can adjust the settings and drag it on top of the curvature layer to make it a child layer. I'm using layer clipping here, which clips it to the visibility of the parent layer only. This means it's in its own private hierarchy for just this layer. So I can do a whole bunch of stuff without worrying about anything outside this stack being affected, like the white stains I painted on earlier. I'll set the Perlin noise to color dodge and then drop in a blur layer in the same hierarchy stack to soften the curve and noise. I'm going to pause the mask making here to tweak the carve group's gradient remap. First, I'll start by tightening the paint layers together in the middle, making sure the stain layers get a good amount of white bandwidth. I'll set the base layer to invisible, then adjust the rust to be higher because of the invisible base being on. This is looking good for now. I'll definitely be tweaking this after I do more work on the mask. Back to the carved mask stack, I'll start working on a drippy texture stain. This is made when the aircraft is parked, when it rains grimy, dusty rain. This is going to be making use of that top layer, which means this needs to be really white. I'll drop in this league's broad large texture as an additive layer and then tile it. Now I need to start clamping this to only the sides and not the top and bottom. I can do that by using two directional masks, which I can add from the generator menu. I'll change the direction from up to down to front to back as this model is mirrored on Z. That will now give me a directional gradient from the left to the right. I'll clip this into the leaks layer and bump the contrast up and the contrast center to one, which will really tighten the directional fall off. I'll then duplicate this directional and invert it using the teardrop. I found that I need to flip the contrast center numbers on the duplicated layer because the layer invert happens before the settings change down here. Once I do that, it will point the direction from the right side. Now that I have two directional layers, I'll clip the second directional layer into the first directional layer. Yeah, that's right. I can just keep nesting layers. I told you the mask system is super powerful. Now that they are all stacked correctly, I just need to set the top directional to add, which will make the directional mask look like this, where the sides are highlighted. Then when I set the root directional to multiply, that will remove the leaks from the black areas of the directional stack, which means the leaky stains here will only be visible on the left and right sides. Now that the complex part is out of the way, I'll throw on a top-down directional onto the leaks layer hierarchy to help tidy up under the ship. From this foundation, I'll add a grunge texture like wipes paint as color burn, which will add some texture noise to the mask stack. I reckon I can start working on the final edge curvature mask that will handle the paint chips. I'll invert the curvature, name this layer to edge peeling and set it to multiply. I'll toggle the visibility of the wipes paint on and off so I can see how this grunge texture is working with the new curvature I just added. Looks good. I'll head back to the curvature layer and set up the curvature settings, thickening up both edge curvature and cavity curvature settings. Once that's feeling good, I'll add a new mask to this layer. Yep, that's right, you can mask mask layers. This is different from just clipping in layers. In fact, I'm going to use both layer masks and clipping in layers for this final layer. Right, so this color mask white is going to be set up to erode the curvature layer a bunch. First, I'll throw in a blob foamy as the base variation. So far, so good, but I need to break up the tiling some more, so I'll add in a palette knife texture, setting it to add to get some harsh chip-like grunge to this. After some tweaks to this layer, I'll drop in a patches texture on top. This is set to multiply as a final burst of grunge variation. Since all of these textures are tiled so much, it's really good to break up tiling patterns as much as possible. 
Oh, whoops, I totally forgot about the leading edge on the wing. So I'll just duplicate the same layer from the white paint carve group and sit that under the edge peeling layer. Hmm, <laughs> nice. To soften the edge peeling layer, I'm going to clip in a slight blur to the curvature layer itself. Default setting should be perfect. It's bloody awesome that I can have both a clip and a layer mask working flawlessly inside a mask stack. This is what makes tool bag texturing so deep. You can do some crazy stuff in the mask stack to really customize the buggery out of them. Now, this mask is looking pretty swish but I think it's time to put some proper colors on the paints. I'll change the main colors to be a nice deep ocean blue. The underpaint will be a green undercoat layer and the stain layer will be a darker blue. I'll also make sure my bump setting looks good and tweak them to get that layered crusty paint feel to them. Before I go back to do more mask work, I'll adjust the carve group gradient a bit more. You'll probably be going back and forth between adding to the mask and tweaking the gradient remap a bit on complex card groups. I would highly recommend doing each part in big chunks. Changing two things at once will become super overwhelming fast. As always, the best way to solve problems is changing fewer things at any one time. So work with the setup till you absolutely must change it. Right, I think these tweaks work well. With that, it will bring an end to this deep dive into the different ways I make and use carve groups. Next video will be all about adding the sweet polish to these textures where I'll add grime and show how I can use a few different ways to add plain decals. So if you're interested in that or any of the other videos we share here, give a like to the video and sub to the channel to get more toolbag content appearing mysteriously on your homepage. See you soon and cheerio friends!